Today we're going to be talking about hard drives. Not SSDs, not external hard drives, but NAS systems. If you're a photographer, videographer, or content creator, I'm sure you have a bunch of hard drives laying around. They all have one common problem. They aren't big enough. So what do we do? We keep buying them over and over and over again. And what problem does that cause? Organization issues. When I'm looking for something, I can't find it because I don't know what hard drive it's on. Today, I have a solution. That's a NAS system. What is a NAS? NAS is short for Network Attached Storage. Think about it as your own personal Google Drive that is connected to your personal network, which means it can be accessed by all your devices like your laptop, your desktop PC, or your phone over Ethernet or Wi-Fi, and multiple people can access the NAS at the same time. To give you an example, I can edit on my desktop PC over Ethernet while my wife is uploading footage to the NAS from her MacBook Pro laptop over Wi-Fi, and we can do this all at the same time. That's something that's not possible with external USB hard drives. They only can be connected to one device at a time. Let's talk about some goals I have for my perfect NAS system. The number one thing I needed was capacity. I know I needed a lot of storage, so I knew I needed a four bay NAS at the minimum. Second was speed. I knew I needed to be able to transfer my footage directly to the NAS as fast as possible. Third, I know I needed to be able to edit directly from the NAS in Adobe Lightroom and Premiere Pro. Fourth, I wanted redundancy. I wanted to use a RAID 5 setup so I can have some sort of backup. Today we're going to be looking at the Asus Store AS5404T and we'll be pairing it with the Asus Store 2.5 gigabyte switch. I contacted Asus Store and they provided this NAS and this 2.5 gigabyte switch but all the hard drives I purchased on my own. Let's take a closer look at this NAS and its specs. This is a 4 bay NAS that can hold up to 20 terabyte hard drives. It has 4 M.2 NVMe Gen 3 SSD slots. This comes with the Intel Celeron N5105 quad core 2 gigahertz processor and 4 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM, which can be upgraded to 16 gigabytes. Two 2.5 gigabyte ethernet ports, USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports for double the performance of previous systems. This also means you can plug in multiple Asus Store expansion devices for even more storage. This also has a 2.0 HDMI port. Let's go over how I have mine set up. First, we're gonna install 16 gigabytes of memory. This is gonna be two eight gigabyte sticks. And you have to make sure you get notebook memory. When I first ordered memory for the NAS system, I ordered 16 gigabytes, but it was for the desktop PC. Next, we're gonna install two one terabyte Sabrent M.2 SSDs. And that's gonna give us read and write cache. Then we're gonna install four 10 terabyte Western digital hard drives. Now we're gonna configure this in a RAID 5. So this will give us about 27, 28 terabytes of usable space. To install the hard drives, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna remove the magnetic cover. You wanna pull up on these tabs and these hard drives will pull right out. Next, you wanna flip the NAS over. It's gonna have four, four little screws. I'm gonna take those out. You're gonna flip it on the top. And right here, you can see a close and open. So you just wanna push that forward and that's gonna open up the system. And then you just pull it apart. Any tools to install the M.2 drives, you just push it in, you pull this tab back and you're done. To install the memory, the first thing you wanna do, you have to remove the four gigabyte stick that the NAS comes with. It's gonna have two silver tabs. You're just gonna pull those out and the memory's gonna pop up. Now you just wanna repeat the process to install the two eight gigabyte six to give you 16 gigabytes of memory. All right, let's go over how to connect everything. First, we're gonna start with our modem. Mine's a modem slash router. So first, I'm gonna connect that to a one gigabyte switch. Then I'm gonna run that into my phone outlet. I converted my phone outlet to ethernet and that's the way I'm able to get an ethernet connection in my office without having to run a long cable up the stairs. So I'm gonna connect that to a 2.5 gigabyte switch. And then I have to connect that to my NAS and my PC. So this particular NAS has two 2.5 gigabyte connections on the back of it. So that's pretty simple. You just connect both of them. My PC has one 2.5 gigabyte connection on the motherboard. To get that second connection, I had to buy a 2.5 gigabyte to USB-A adapter. 
If you want to get 550 megabytes per second read and write speed, you have to hook up two connections from your NAS and two from your PC. When I only had one hooked up from my PC to the switch, I was getting roughly about 250 to 270. All right, let's get this set up. First, download the Asus Store Control Center, then select the RAID configuration for your system. We went with the RAID 5. With the RAID 5, we get great speed and we also get redundancy, but you lose one of the hard drives. So even though we have 40 terabytes of space, we only got 30 terabytes of usable space. But if one hard drive fails, we won't lose any data. We can replace that drive and the system will rebuild itself. Next, let's set up the SSD caching. If you only have one M.2 drive, you will only see the option for read only cached. If you have two or more M.2 drives, you will see the option for read or write cache. These are gonna be used to boost the speed of the NAS by acting as read and write caches. When a file is written on the NAS, temporarily it's gonna write it on the M.2 drive, then the system is gonna write it to the slower mechanical disk. Small files that are used regularly are going to be stored in the read cache for faster access. Every gigabyte of SSD cache requires approximately 512 kilobytes of system memory. To ensure system stability, ADM will only allow a quarter of the total memory to be allocated to SSD caching. To access my NAS, I mapped it as a network drive. Therefore, I can drag and drop footage to the NAS as if it was a local drive. When I was researching NAS drives, I could not find any examples of somebody editing directly off the NAS in real time. Let's take a look at me editing 33 megapixel Sony A74 images from Lightroom. Also, I'm gonna jump in Premiere Pro and I'm gonna be editing 4K60 10-bit Sony A7S III video footage. In conclusion, I was really shocked at just how well it was performing. I'm getting read and write speeds as fast as my Samsung T5 SSD. Having those two 2.5 gigabyte connections on the NAS and PC was just a game changer. The first NAS that I ever had was a Western Digital PR2100 and it only had a one gigabyte connection. Transferring footage and editing off of it was a little slow. If you want to edit directly off of a NAS, you definitely need that 2.5 gigabyte switch with the SMB multi-channel connection, or you need a 10 gigabyte connection. This particular NAS, you cannot upgrade it to a 10 gigabyte connection, but Asusor does have other NAS that you can upgrade to that 10 gig connection if that's something that you really want. This is a bit of an investment, but it's well worth it. The NAS comes in at $529. The 2.5 gigabyte switch is 119. The 2.5 gigabyte USB adapter is about $30 to $50. 10 terabyte to 20 terabyte hard drives is gonna run you anywhere from $150 to $350. So this overall setup is about $2,200. So who is this system for? If you're a wedding photographer or videographer, content creator or event videographer, this is a must. You're gonna need something where you can put all of that footage, especially if you're shooting 4K and if you're shooting multiple cameras, that footage is gonna start adding up over time and you want it all in one central location so you can organize it really well. And with the current cost of Dropbox and Google Drive, you might as well take that money and invest in your own personal cloud system. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe and bell so you get notifications and you see more of my tech reviews. If you're anything like me, when I first started looking at NAS systems, you're gonna have a lot of questions. So make sure you just drop a comment below and I'll make sure I answer every single question. There'll be links in the description of all the products mentioned in this video, and those are affiliate links, so I do get a small commission from those, but it doesn't cost you anything extra.